Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brother Dan and uh, I forget her name there on God's Healer 7 for their witness. <laughs> I, uh, I told you before, you know, God leads us into these places of which we go through these periods of time. And they're translated in in the revelation. In other words, we are that revealing. Alright? And it's it's the Father revealing to us as we walk in that revealing. That after we've gone through it, we look back and we see, oh, there I am. <clears throat> and this is what we need to begin to see ourselves in. And the reason I thank Brother Dan, and uh, I, for, I tell you, I forget her name. I hope she forgives me. <laughs> but uh, they brought up a very interesting uh, subject, and I thought that I should pass that on to you. Because it's, I know it's going to be hard for you guys to accept this and to believe it. It was Isaiah 40, verse 2 through 8. Uh, yes, comfort. I'm going to do the, right from the beginning. Uh, comfort. Yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her war warfare is ended. And this is what I was referring to about the house of David, the spiritual armor. Her warfare has ended. Okay? That her inequity is pardoned. Why? Because her eyes are going to be awakened and she's going to flee out and turn away from where she has been at. The household of faith. The bridesmaids. And they're awake. Their eyes are open. And they flee out and or in the inner court they cast the bondwoman and the son of perdition out. Not all of them. Because like I said, there are wheat and tares on the outer court. This is all the picture of the temple in Jerusalem. The first temple. That was built. Okay. That outer court is the one that's going to be trampled upon by the foot of men. These households of faith, the tares, which end up are the apostate church. Those that are left over that refuse to repent and come out of that, they're the apostate church. But the wheat are gathered out. Now in the inner court, and I've mentioned this before. Faithless Israel on the outer court, wheat and tares. Okay? The reason they're considered faithless is because other than for receiving the seal, okay, upon Jacob's well and upon, spiritually speaking, their hearts, okay, <coughs> they've been sealed until the day of redemption, which is about to take place. In the dawning of that day, the Holy Spirit comes forth, which is about to take place. Their eyes are open, they are awakened. And the wheat, as I've said before, flee out, that's the outer court, into the inner court, because now their eyes have been opened. I believe they received the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the seals of their wells have been broken, which is like Jacob's well, unsealed, okay? And the waters begin to spring forth. Now, they're in the inner court. Now, in the inner court, okay, we have treacherous Judah. She's there too. They're the disobedient who refuse to enter in to the anointed word of God that comes through the workmen of the eleventh hour. 
the sons and daughters of God, the Melchizedek priesthood. They refuse to receive it. It's also the added oil, portion of oil, okay, that the bridesmaids are seen have, that they have, they're given. Okay, it's the anointed word of God. That's what the oil is. That's what you always use, the prophets would use, when they would anoint kingship and authority. Okay, this is spiritually speaking now, because we've come into he who builds the temple, the church that's being established upon the rock, the revealed word of the Father. Now, Jesus was the cornerstone of the foundation. He was not the bedrock. He himself told us that he said nothing, he heard not the Father say, and did nothing, he saw not the Father do. Then he went on to explain to Peter, this was the rock that he would build his church upon. This is what he's doing. The foundation that was laid is now being placed, the stones, sons and daughters of God, you out of the mountain of God, by the hand of God, in the revelation, are being placed upon the foundation. That foundation sits upon the revealed word of the Father, which is the bed rock that the cornerstone sets his foundation upon. This is that rock of which is immovable. So this is why we need to enter in. <laughs> okay? Now, let me finish up what's being said here. That her inequity is pardoned. For she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, <clears throat> you have to understand that <clears throat> we represent spiritual Israel, the branch that was grafted in while contrary to our very nature. Why? The nature, the outer man, okay, under the cultivated branch was made, cultivated, amen, by the law. But it only helped, it only kept the outer man in order. It did nothing for the inner man. This is why Jesus said that you, you know, without the washing of the inside of the cup, okay, we're not whole, we're not complete. He brought the kingdom of heaven. That's what came with it, the message of the kingdom of heaven, which was being born again on the inner man. This is the two men being made one in Christ Jesus, not only in us, in the natural physical bodies of each individual, the outer man and the inner man, but it spiritually represents natural Israel and spiritual Israel. You see what I'm saying? Spiritual Israel is a t type of the inner man of this body, okay, which includes the branch that was broken off. And I've tried to share this with you about he who stands upon the Mount of Olives with one foot in the east and one foot in the west. These are the two individual evangelical footmen of the Melchizedek priesthood. One under the law, natural, whose eyes are open and are grafted back into the tree of life of which they were broken off of. The other in the west Spiritual Israel. Now the spiritual begins to come forth before the natural in the end. He said that which was first, those were the first covenant people, the natural, read the word, it says the natural comes first, then the spiritual. These are the first he was referring to. He says, but in the end, the first shall be last. And the last, who are they? The last ones to enter into a covenant agreement with the Father was the body of Christ, spiritual Israel. Are you getting this? All right. In the end, he says, that's going to turn itself around. So now, <laughs> the spiritual is going to begin to take place for the body of Christ before the natural events take place for natural Israel. Now let me finish this. 
<laughs> the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert. Brothers and sisters, please. Twelve years ago, I received this dream of the Messiah's second assembly. Twelve years ago, I received the word from the Father that I would be his mouthpiece. Now, a mouthpiece is nothing more than a trumpet stone. A trumpet stone is one who has been chosen from among the stones, the sons and daughters, that the Father might speak through. As one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert, southwest corner of the wall. That's where the trumpet stone in natural Israel was found. I didn't come to this understanding until years later. It's always after we come into it. Then it's revealed to us. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Okay, the lowly, downtrodden, afflicted, those that, uh, the whores, the adulterers, the drunkards, who have, these who have repented and turned away. Okay, the valley. Okay, every valley shall be exalted and every mountain hill brought Lo, the crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken, the voice said, Cry out. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. This is the Holy Spirit of fire coming to cleanse and purge the temple. Okay? Ministers of fire. Okay. But the word of our God stands forever. That's why we need to be upon the revealed Word of God, standing upon that rock in the ark, <laughs> in the banquet hall. We need to get in here and come in under it so we're safe. This is, what, this is all what is getting ready to take place, which I believe <coughs> is for myself and for the sons and daughters, is as Lazarus who was four days in his tomb, the friend of the Lord, and remember I've mentioned to you, first disciples, then brothers, then friends. Look at the order. I've repeated this to you before. There is most definitely an order in the kingdom of heaven. God is a God of order. And you need to get in that place that you are, and thank God you're in a place somewhere in written in that Lamb's Book of Life. Don't be worried about who you are or who you are not. Just be grateful you are. But there is an order. And that's that kingdom order, the government which is established before the end takes place. Heavenly Jerusalem coming down with a child in her arm. Solomon's rule, the sons and daughters of God, who were given authority to build the temple. Now, how is this worldwide? Because each of them represent the body. Each. So you don't have to come running off to Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> it's spiritual. It takes place worldwide. So the sons and daughters of spiritual Israel, stones shoot out of the mountain of God, are spread throughout the world. So the anointed word of God, when it goes forth, 
the wheat and it might become out wherever there are in Australia or Zimbabwe or wherever they may be. A son will be there for them or a daughter or a daughter that they might come in under the shelter of the Holy Spirit of God in the anointed work. This is what's getting ready to take place, folks. Now, there's so much more in this. Uh, I don't want to go beyond that because I wanted to share that part. But go ahead and read Isaiah 40. It's, it's really good. Uh, that's chapter... Uh, uh, yeah, Isaiah 40. Uh, yeah. Well, that's chapter 41. Isaiah, yeah. Chapter 40. Chapter 40. I'm sorry. Isaiah chapter 40. Amen. There's about... Uh, I don't know. Looks like... Wow, there's, it's a long one. It's like about 31 verses. Amen, Jesus? So, uh, what else can I say? <laughs> I don't know. I, I just pray some of you are getting a hold of this. I want you to take a look at that temple that was built. And see how it's built. It's got an outer court an inner court, and in the inner court, separated by a curtain, and I believe there's a set of steps you've got to go up in order to get to it, there only was the, the, rent, the renting of that veil took place, that's the way, for us to enter into, which is the kingdom of heaven. Now, it's likened on to the mountain of God, in the sense that the priest, the, the priest, okay, the sons and daughters of God, all right, uh, the high priest, the high priest is the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that. But the sons and daughters are the bloodline of Jesus Christ, spiritually speaking. That's why the anointing comes upon them. That's why they're given the revealed word of God uh, as a witness and a testimony to what the mouth speak, is speaking. They, it's the witness Okay, of the blood. These three shall be in agreement. So in there was the Holy of Holies. So it's out of that place, the blood of Christ, that soaks the robes. Okay, amen. That the word of God, the wine, comes forth. So, <sighs> stay fast where you're at. In regards to that place, 30, 60, 100 fold, all right, they who have laid down their lives, seed of faith has fallen in the ground, no longer ministering from the soul through the spirit, because that's all that 60 fold is. They were given the gifts, <clears throat> and their souls have been redeemed, all right, as will everyone else, but the rewards will differ because of the faithfulness of the 60-fold, above that unfaithfulness of the 30-fold, all shall be, the souls shall be saved, but as I have explained before, there are different gifts given. It's the 100-fold that I believe, by faith, receive the gift of immortality and rule and reign with Jesus here on earth for the thousand-year rule and reign, which this day is dawning right here, right now. This is that day... He said that you, the children of the light, shall be made aware of. Now, there are a lot of people out there trying to tell you, you're not going to be aware of that. And I tell you, that is not what the Word says. He says that the children of darkness won't know. All right? Not the children of the light. The children of the light shall be made aware of that day. That's why he went on to explain Noah, Jonah, and Lot. So we would see in the spiritual understanding when our eyes were open what Noah, Jonah, and Lot represented. So I don't want to hold you much longer. I'm just trying to bring it back through for you so somebody starts to pick up on this. In Jesus' name I pray and give thanks to the Father our God. Amen. Love you.